So we want to continue with our example of the free reduced lunch in the passing math exams. Now I've added in a question here at the top of this page. If you're watching this in spring 2023, you can probably fit this at the bottom of the page instead. This will be here um, in these notes from this point on. All right, so school K has the values 22, 60. Explain what this means in the context of the situation. So this is an, a nice question. It's easy, honestly, once you know what you're looking at. But it's very valuable to understand what you're looking at when you look at a, a point like this. And the answer is that points are ordered pairs. So when you see parentheses with two numbers, this is an x value right here, and this is a y value right there. So that's the x and that's the y. And school k has those values. So when it's saying to explain what they mean, what you're saying is school k has 22, and then that would be for the x. So if you go back to the graph or the chart, that was the percent of students on free reduced lunch. So school K has 22% of students receiving free or reduced lunch and so that's the X. So it's saying, hey, you know, X is 22. So you're explaining X is 22 right here. So this is saying, you know, X is 22 in context. And then school K also had or has 60% of students passing the state math exam. So it's always valuable to remember that parentheses with two numbers in it like this is called an ordered pair. It means that x is always the first number and y is always the second number. And so you're just explaining what they mean in the context of this situation. That's all. All right, now Amber High School, nearby Amber High School, has 40% of their students on free reduced lunch. And we need to explain, oh, excuse me, what percent does the least scores regression model predict past the math test? Okay, well, if you read it, you can see it's saying Amber High School had 40% on free reduced lunch. Hmm. Okay, 40% free reduced lunch, that's X. So, and it's 40, it's not 0 .40. This is a mistake a lot of students make. If you go back to the table, or to the graph, you can see that it's using whole numbers. So it's using percent values, not decimal values. So you have to leave it as 40 because that's the way the table left them. It did not make them decimals. So we need to make a note of that. That's a very important note. A lot of students mess that up. and the graph used whole numbers. They didn't, in other words, make it a decimal. A lot of students see this and see that it's 40% and they want to make it 0 0.40, which is correct, but not useful for our particular problem. So because our table used whole numbers when we, for example, did it in StatCrunch, we used whole numbers. So we're not going to make these decimals because we never did for the problem in the first place. All right, so it's saying x is 40. Then it's saying what percent does the least squares regression model, aka the line of best fit, right? That's all that is. That's just saying the line, right? The linear model, <laughs> right? The line of best fit. Here, I'll call it the line of best fit. Right? It's just a fancy way of saying the same thing, right? The line of best fit. Predict, or you could call it the regression model, something like that. Regression line, whatever predict past the math exam. Ah, past the math exam is y. So they're saying, hey, x is 40, what's y? Okay, well, the equation we found, we found it right back here. It's 69.108 take away 0.283x. 
So y equals 69.108 take away 0 0.283 times x. I didn't bother putting it in parentheses, but it is. That's always multiplication like that. So this is the same thing as 69.108 take away 0 0.283 times, and then the x was 40. So I'm just going to go stick that into Desmos. All right, Desmos will find that value for us. Um, all right, Desmos. Let me get rid of some of these things from previous videos. <laughs> so 69.108 take away 0 0.283 times 40. Just so you can see, multiplication can be written with the times dot or be written with the parentheses. Now I know there are some of you that are sitting there going, but I want it the other way, I want it the algebra way. Well, it's fine, it would be this way, right? Negative 0.283 times 40 plus 69.108. If you use the other version of the equation, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter which way you write it. What matters is that you put the x in the correct spot with the negative 0.283 and that you multiply and then add, or that you add and then do it that way. Either way, it's 57.788. And this would be percent, right? right? It's technically the percent passing the math exam, if you want to know math test. That way you have some context. So that's your y hat value. It's not a y value because the y values are the values in the table. It's a y hat value. So I guess I should kind of say y hat right here, but you know, it works. Again, if anybody wants to, I can just write real quickly. If you want to write it the other way, it would be negative 0.283 times 40 plus 69.108. It gets you the same answer, so it doesn't make any difference. So that's just an or. You don't have to write it. You don't have to do it that way. It's no big deal. All right. Is Amber High School outside the scope of the model? Okay. Well, being outside the scope of the model means that its x value is far away from our other x values. So you have to look at the x value for Amber, which was 40. So you go back and you look at your table or your graph and you say, look at all these x values. Is 40 amidst and among those x values? Well, sure, right? 40 is right in there, right in the mix. So no, right? So no. Um, actually, I can just write it right here. No, x equals 40 for Amber High School is not um, outside the scope of the model. Uh, because um, x equals 40 is right among all the values in our table. Sorry, I had to pause while a dog was barking <laughs> in my house. So, as I was saying, x equals 40 is right among all the values that are given in our table. So, all our given table values. So, it is not outside the scope of the model. Now we're going to determine the residual for Amber High School. So just note that. That's a definition that we've learned. The residual is the real life. I'm going to write it right over here. Residual. And I actually wrote like four different versions of this formula. But it's, it's the real life y. Oh my goodness. It's the same mistake I made on the previous video. Real life y, there we go, minus the predicted y hat. Okay, so in real life, Amber High School had 65% of their students passing the math test. So that's their real life y, right here. 65% students pass math, so that's y equals 65. Again, use the whole number, not the decimal, because that's what the table did. So I'm going to put 65 right here, minus the prediction, 
Well, I made a prediction for Amber High School right here at 57.788. So that's what I'm going to use, 57.788. Technically, these are both percents. So I could put a percent sign right here. And that's kind of my unit, if you will, for this problem. Okay, so when I take 65 and I subtract 57.788, let's see what that is. It's positive 7.212. And that would be percent. Um, again, it's passing the math test. That's the context, right, for this unit. So percent passing math is kind of the unit in this case. So this piece right here is the unit. All right, then it said, interpret that residual. Did Amber High School do well or poorly? Well, these are state math exams. So you have to think about Amber High School was higher than expected. So if you look back at the graph right here, 40, and we predicted right here at 57.788. Uh, so if you want to label it on the graph right here, Amber High School is right there. That's the prediction. So Amber prediction. But what it actually was, was at 65, which is um, up here. Amber in real life. OK, the difference between those two is the value we just found. That's the residual which was 7.212, right? It's the difference between what we thought it would be and what it actually was. And these are percent of students passing the math exam. This is a good thing, right? So we're talking about passing here. So the fact that Amber High School is above what we expect is good. It shows that Amber High School is doing well because this is a positive thing. So we want to be a school that scores higher than expected as opposed to a school that scores lower than expected. So Amber High School is doing well. Or did well, I should say. Because um, more students passed the math exam. Well, I should say 7.2% more students. 7.212% more students pass the math exam. Than was expected. Again, you could draw yourself a little picture. We got a line. Here's the prediction. Here's Amber, right? Amber's up here. Prediction down here. Right. They did well. All right. Now, suppose we find out that a local private high school wants to use this least squares regression model to make predictions as well. Why would this not be appropriate? Well, you have to go back to the original problem and the way it was stated. And it says right here in the first line, or second line, I should say, that these schools are all public schools. Hmm. So Amber High School wasn't outside the scope of the model, but this school is, right? This local school that wants to use this data set, that would be inappropriate because they're under a different set of rules being a private school. It's, it's not really officially outside the scope of the model. It's more like outside the scope of the context. <laughs> so our data set was comprised, was made up of only public schools. So it would be unfair and inappropriate.
for this private high school that's asking to use that same data set. Again, it's, it's really more that it's completely out of the context of the problem. Right? If the problem is all about public schools, then you have to stick with public schools. You can't all of a sudden switch to private school for this one private school unless you're including all the local private schools. <laughs>